Hey everyone, today I'm going to have you in stitches. Not really, this one's not going to be funny. Hey David, I've been taking, I've been practicing image stitching and I'm getting photos where the exposure from one shot to the next is uneven and the stitches aren't working out well. What are some best practices for image stitching? What image stitching is, if you haven't done this before, it's where you take five or a dozen or 500 photos and then you use software to put them all together to make one super huge photo. And it's, people will say it's like using digital to replicate large format. That's not exactly true for lots of reasons with lens physics, but that all aside, what you're doing is basically using your digital camera to create a much larger digital image. So, um, when shooting image stitching, the first thing you wanna do is either shoot in manual exposure mode or use your AE lock. I prefer manual because you can't accidentally release the AE lock or use it incorrectly so that your image uh, exposure changes halfway through the stitching process. So what you wanna do for using manual is take a meter reading of the most important part of your image. And that could be your subject, obviously, I would, I would hope. And you take a meter reading off of that, you set your, your camera's um, settings for, for the manually for what your aperture and shutter speed will be. And then you do your stitching composition Every single image is going to have the exact same meter reading and shutter speed, so you know that from one image to the next, the exposure is gonna be consistent and you will have a better chance of not having inconsistent exposure across the image. The next thing that you need to do to stitch is make sure that you overlap. If you take a photo here and then you take another one and there's no overlap, what's gonna happen is that Every single lens has some amount of light loss, and the wider the lens is, the greater it is, especially when you shoot wide open. So if you just butt your photos up next to each other, your light loss is gonna come in like this, and it's gonna look like you have dark stalactites throughout your photo, well, except along the bottom where it's gonna look like you have dark stalagmites, or like you're looking through the jaws of something with translucent teeth that are eating you as you take the photo. So the way that I stitch images together is I have my subject here that I'm gonna take in this frame, the center of the frame. I take the picture and then I adjust the camera until what was in the center of the frame is now on the edge. So I'm only moving the camera 50% of the frame every time. And what that allows the software to do is to eliminate the portions of the frame that have light loss because those parts of the frame are gonna be a little bit softer so the, cam so the software in post is going to bias away from using softer parts of the image, if possible. So it'll end up using the lighter parts of the image that are at the center of the frame. So moving your camera half of the frame each time will help you prevent having light loss in the middle of your images and also help you with overall image sharpness. The other thing to do is shoot in the opposite orientation of your finished image. So if you're gonna shoot a large landscape image, shoot your camera in portrait mode. Or if you're gonna be shooting a portrait, shoot your camera in landscape mode. That's gonna set the software up to do a better job of taking all of the overlapped images, getting rid of the data that you don't want in there like softness and light loss at the edges of frames. And it will also help it to overlap the images more. So all of the, so th that best practice will give you a better result from the software side. So those are the, some of the things I do when I image stitch. It's, it is a really neat process to use. You can get some very high res images. You can, take, you can use uh, a standard lens and create images that look like they were taken with a fisheye, things like that. And it's, it's one of the best digital techniques out there, I think, and um, definitely worth getting some of the best practices in so that you can consistently do it well and repeatedly.